coronavirus pandemic. Now there's over 1,000 active cases in the state of South Carolina. And that number has doubled since late last week. The deaths in the United States of America, now over 3,500, has tripled since Friday. Tripled the number of deaths just in three, four days' time. Charleston County now reports 142 cases. So um, I, I just can't emphasize enough the continued importance of everyone staying at home unless you need to go out for an essential service, to stay distance when you do go out, and to stay smart, stay well. So we have to stick with it, y'all. And, and I want to commend uh, some of the neighboring cities who are all stepping up and adding uh, further measures in order to uh, keep people safe. And uh, the city of uh, North Charleston has come up with some, some, some good recommendations for retail stores. Chief Courier is going to uh, uh, share with you. We're going to adopt those same guidelines in the city of Charleston. Uh, the town of Mount Pleasant has uh, taken further action, and I understand uh, by reports that Governor McMaster, in addition to his executive order yesterday regarding beaches and boat landings and all, will, will come forward with even further measures uh, this afternoon. So, so why is this important? It really makes a difference. So if you look at places around the world who have put in place early on and active measures to uh, create distancing and to keep folks at home uh, if possible, city of San Francisco, for example, is seen way less than what they expected in terms of uh, folks needing to go to the hospital. And I was just reading an article today about the country of Denmark. Now Europe is a little ahead of the United States time-wise with, with this pandemic, but uh, the country of Denmark, again, very early on, put in uh, stay-at-home measures, and, and they are now talking about starting to get back to normal after Easter. Now, they started before we did, under, understand, but it did make a difference. If you look at the number of cases between Denmark and the countries like Italy and Spain that didn't come on quite so early, it's, it's, it's a remarkable difference in the number of cases. So, as I said Friday, we can still make a difference here in Charleston and in South Carolina if we follow these measures to stay at home, to stay distance. It's really really can make an incredible difference. Now I want to share with you all that we continue to work on, on numerous fronts uh, with the medical university and healthcare community and with DHEC. And I'm just going to point, point out uh, uh, one area and later this week I hope to share even more information uh, about this and that's the issue of uh, aiding those who are experiencing homelessness in the event that they too uh, may encounter a coronavirus and be susceptible to spread it in our community. So, um, you know, MUSC did this MUSC.care uh, screening service. So the city helped facilitate those who are experiencing homelessness if they were experiencing uh, the symptoms of the coronavirus to get their screening done. Uh, setting up uh, email addresses and sharing uh, um, capability with them at our navigation center. Uh, then we work with Fetter Health Clinic in order to transport uh, 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 someone experiencing homelessness and also the coronavirus symptoms. Uh, put them in a place of isolation while they uh, were then afterwards taken to get a test, wait for their test, uh, feed them in the meantime while they're in isolation and then thankfully to date uh, the, the folks that we have gone through this protocol have not tested positive. We're waiting on two tests right now uh, and then if they did test positive to maintain that place of isolation or quarantine for them. So just think about all those steps that are involved 
uh, uh, to help someone in our community experiencing homelessness in the event they are experiencing the symptoms of the coronavirus. And so our staff has been hard at work and working with DHEC and MUSC on that issue. Um, now, as we talked about before, the impact of um, all these closures and the coronavirus on our uh, economy uh, will be uh, intense. Um, I think Charleston kind of takes a double hit because of our uh, uh, strong economy here on tourism and hospitality. Uh, they kind of took the first blow, if you will, when restaurants were uh, closed for on-premise dining. Uh, we have 40,000 local jobs in this business, so we want to be as helpful as possible for these businesses when they're able to get back on their feet. Uh, I had a, a conference call today with a consortium of banks. Uh, all the banks in our community are on board to help our small business community. They're all were, were on the same page about uh, deferring payments, about forgiving late fees, about being ready to step up. They're all getting ready to step up to help assist the Small Business uh, Administration in administering uh, uh, the, the, the new loan programs that were approved by Congress last, last Friday, uh, including the emergency disaster funds that if you apply, you can get within three days a $10,000 forgivable grant to help your business. And all of our banks, banking community will be stepping up to the plate to help with that. And as the SBA uh, finalizes those uh, guidelines over the next couple of days, hopefully by the end of this week, beginning of the next week, we'll have another announcement with those banks to share with the public just how willing we are to help them. Uh, enforcement of our um, existing uh, ordinance, emergency ordinance, and those of the governor. Uh, I'm going to call on uh, Chief Courier and Chief Reynolds to give you all an update on that. But needless to say, uh, we thank Governor McMaster for his leadership, and we stand ready as a city to, uh, uh, as he's asked us to do, to help enforce his uh, emergency measures. And uh, we believe and, um, uh, that all of the measures that we've taken as a city are absolutely lockstep in concert with the governor's wishes to, um, to keep folks safe and well and, and urge folks to stay home and stay distance. So um, Chief, Reynolds, uh, Chief Courier, our fire chief, is going to share uh, so, some remarks about what we learned this morning that the city of North Charleston is doing that we want to also do. Chief? Good afternoon. Uh, to lessen the chance of spreading the virus while in retail spaces, we are asking that retailers voluntarily comply with the following four recommendations. First, we ask that they limit their occupancy to 50% of that allowed by code. We ask that they mark and identify areas for proper customer separation at checkout lanes. Designate each aisle as one way to lessen the cross traffic. And also provide hand sanitizers and or wipes to all patrons. Again, those recommendations were rolled out by North Charleston this morning and as a city we're adopting the same. So we, we thank Mayor Summey and his fire department for their leadership in that. I will note that last Friday our livability and police officers were um, uh, meeting with all of the grocery stores and big box retailers that remain, to be op that remain open in the city of Charleston to give them um, a guidance on social distancing and how they might uh, comply with our ordinance, but these specific uh, uh, recommendations make a lot of sense to us. Uh, now on further enforcement matters, uh, Chief Reynolds. Thank you, Mayor. I feel very, uh, very fortunate to be able to work for a mayor, a leader, a man who cares so deeply about this city, 
who so courageously is doing everything possible to keep us all safe. A few things I'll cover is just reemphasizing the importance of social distancing. It sounds simple, but everything we're doing uh, is to try to keep everybody safe, to keep everybody home if you don't need to be out. We continue to focus on reducing crime and the fear of crime in our communities. Our calls for service were down significantly week one. Week two, they started ticking up and we're almost back to a normal cycle of calls for service. We actually had a homicide on Monday morning, early yesterday morning. I say that because we have a lot of work to do to reduce violence, to focus on crime, and to keep our city safe. And as we focus on the ordinances of the city, as we focus on the governor's order, orders, and as we focus on keeping people home, we need to be out in the communities, and we are out in the communities, and we don't want to spend too much time splitting up gatherings, which we have done in different places. But here's the good news. The great people of this city are, are, are voluntarily making this work. And I want to say thank you to everybody that's been a part of that. One of the ordinances that was just passed last night by the governor is to keep boats other than commercial fishing, fishing boats off of our waterways. So we're taking extra steps and working with all of our partners in the county and in the region to make sure that we have our boats, our Marine Patrol boats, out on the water and to make sure that the boat landings are closed. We have signage that's been put out there. We have officers and sheriff's deputies that are working together that are out there and we're going to continue to do as much as we can to make sure that everybody stays home and that are not in violation of those orders. We do believe that we have a trending, if you will, and a good direction. If you look around the city, this weekend was much better than the prior weekend. We were out and about all weekend. We'll continue to be out throughout this entire event. But I just want to, uh, as we continue to build that trust and as partners continue to build through this, this event, which it seems is going to last maybe a few more weeks, we want to make sure that we emphasize everybody doing their part so we can focus on protecting you. We continue to have thefts. I've, I've just this, just today talked to my commanders about a vehicle theft that occurred where somebody left their keys in the ignition, where a stolen handgun was taken, where they left the gun in an unlocked vehicle. Those are things that we can all do to protect our city, to partner together with our communities. Things like prevention and education, not just with social distancing, but to keep our communities safe. And the last thing that I just want to uh, emphasize again and end on is, uh, is the amazing sacrifice of the people in our communities. Let's continue to check on our neighbors, especially our elderly neighbors, those people that are sick, that are shut in, that need help. There's an amazing togetherness that I feel in our community. People want to get this right. As the mayor has said from day one, if we can flatten this curb, we can get back to the recovery phase, back to normal more quickly but we have a lot of work to do until that occurs. So thank you to everybody that's been working with the police department. Every single interaction that we've had, every single group that we've addressed, every single person, every business has been highly cooperative, has addressed those concerns, and has heeded these warnings. So thank you, we have a great city, and thank you for working together and finding that balance that we need to find. So thank you, Chief Reynolds and Chief Courier and all of our first responders. Uh, you all do an amazing job, and what our citizens do makes a big difference in keeping you all safe. I also want to thank all of our health care workers in our community. I mean, they do a fantastic job. And again, what we do as citizens uh, to prevent the spread of this virus uh, is a huge impact on our health care system and community. And lastly, I want to thank our citizens because as Chief Reynolds pointed out, it's really uh, your willingness and collaboration um, that's, that's making a difference and can continue to make a difference. Um, I'm, I'm just going to use the example yesterday of um, the governor's leadership to, um, to rain down on uh, boat use and 
folks gathering on beaches and sandbars and all like that. Um, hey, I'm one of the first guys that that's what I love to do. I love to be out on the water and all like that. Um, but we've got a couple more weeks, everyone, where, where we all need to pull together. And, and, and I know it's challenging. We're not used to it. Maybe we're getting used to it now. But continue this distancing, staying at home if you can. Prevent the spread of this virus to flatten this curve. It will make a difference in Charleston and in, and in the state of South Carolina. We can still make a difference. It's so important for us to do this. So I just want to thank our citizens for your cooperation so, so far, your understanding, your patience. We need to keep it up uh, for a bit longer. We need to stick with it. And this will make it so much easier for us to recover, to be resilient, and to rebound when the time comes. And it's, it's, it's around the corner, but we, we need to stick with it for now. So uh, without further ado, I'll open it up, see if y'all have any questions for myself or uh, one of the chiefs. Are there any plans to use any city buildings as potential hospital overflow sites if that becomes something that's needed? Well, if, if it were needed, it certainly would be uh, uh, considered. Uh, we, we've been, as I mentioned, in close contact with the medical university. Uh, I think they're looking at some other alternatives first. But uh, I, I'm confident that they are exploring all those possibilities. If we all do a great job, though, in keeping the flattening the curve, um, it will just be a contingency plan and not a plan that they have to execute. But um, uh, trust me, they are making those contingency plans.